Tomorrow, seven men will be sentenced for trading three quarters of a million images of child pornography on the internet. Mr. Bulldog, do you realize that you've ruined the innocence of these children? Why did you collect so many images of children? We worked out a technique where we could actually watch them live on the internet. It's great, the net. New pictures to trade. It's wonderful. It's, it's just, it draws you in, it sucks you in. It's a whole world in itself. Tonight, Panorama reveals the inside story of the police hunt for the Wonderland Club, an international ring of paedophiles. Every one of these images represents a disaster to a family somewhere. We never think it's our child. Never. The faces of a thousand unknown children, victims of sexual abuse. In a dark underworld of the internet, paedophiles traded these pictures in a club they called Wonderland. Some even preyed on young children to satisfy the demands of their friends. What made this ring so very different, it was real children. Real active abuse of children on a global scale and the exchange of that material between the members. So it was very, very disturbing. David Hines was a member of Wonderland, a loner who had himself been abused as a child. He found it easy to discover child pornography when he first went onto the internet. The first thing anyone does when they get online is go looking for the porn. It's, it's, just, it's one of those things. And I found that fairly easily. Um, and within 24 hours I'd found the child porn as well. I didn't expect to find it at first. I thought, well, it's an urban myth. It's just something you hear about on the news. And um, there it was. It was sitting in front of me. Within days, he was hooked, exploring the hidden depths of the Internet. There he met other paedophiles. Thinking they were protected by the anonymity of the net, they traded sexually explicit images of children and talked about them. I had people I could talk to, I had people that I could trade images with as well, but I had friends. I'd never had so many friends, I had friends all over the world. For two years now we've been piecing together the inside story of the Wonderland Club through the unique access that we've had to the worldwide police operation to track down the members of the club. I've had to look at many of the images of children they collected. They're just too explicit, too distressing to show in their original state. These images present disturbing evidence of the extensive but secret world of paedophiles on the internet. The story of Wonderland began in America four years ago in the small community of Greenfield in California. In April 1996, a ten-year-old girl, Allison, stayed the night with her friend from school. A few days later, Allison's mother received a phone call. The school friend's father, Ronald Reaver, had been arrested for molesting a child. She called and said, I think you should talk to your daughter to see if she's been a victim. I said, well, okay, I don't think so. You know, I mean, I'll let you know. I don't, I don't think so. And I honestly was just in such a scramble at that moment it was it was unfathomable to me that there could be anything to it Ronald Reaver had threatened Allison to stop her telling anyone what had happened in the days after his arrest the young girl tried to protect her friend's father so we brought her in and talked with her and she just crossed her little arms and said, nope, 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 I'm not a victim. And I said, do you know what molestation is? Do you know what a victim is? Do you, you know, because at that point I was shooting from just a blank space. I didn't have a clue um, because we never think it's our child. Never. But later that day, while other children were preparing for a school trip, Alison shut herself away in her room. I was taking some clothes into her room and I found her curled up on her bed. And I knew, I knew at that moment. And 
I said to her, um, I said to myself, I prayed that um, whatever I do at this point, please let me say the right thing. From the privacy of his home in Greenfield, Ronald Reaver had gone onto the internet to trade child pornography with a group of men in other parts of America. But it went much further when Reaver encouraged his young daughter to have her friends over to stay. One night in the Easter holidays when Allison was staying, Reaver linked up a small camera to his computer. He took the child into the computer room and abused her, online, in front of a dozen men watching in four different countries. They typed in requests for Reva to perform specific sexual acts with the child. To have it revealed that, that this was at, in the middle of the, the slumber party, she had been pulled out of the party and taken into uh, the computer room and she was um, molested and, and violated and raped on line as it was being broadcast to Australia and Canada and Finland and, and places all over the United States was just devastating to me. And I just, I just sat there with tears just streaming down my face because I was barely beginning to absorb what had happened. Alison's ordeal might never have come to light if another local child hadn't complained that Reva had tried to abuse her. Ronald Reva was sentenced to over a hundred years in jail for his part in the abuse of children here in California. A dozen other men from around the United States received shorter prison sentences. But that wasn't the end of the story. The electronic trail led beyond America to a town in England. Hastings, a once genteel resort town on the Sussex coast, has more recently become a haunt of men who desire children. Pedophiles have been drawn here by the prospect of watching youngsters on the beach. One of those men was Ian Baldock, a 28-year-old computer technician. In October 1997, his house was raided by Sussex police. They were acting on a tip-off from U.S. Customs, who had found Baldock's email address on Ronald Reaver's computer in California. Ian Baldock's machine was examined by the police computer forensics expert. Stored inside it, I found an absolutely massive library of child pornography. More than 42,000 paedophile images. This was enormous. It was four times larger than anything I had ever seen before. What I also discovered was that Ian Baldock's computer had distributed 1,642 images to 17 other internet users in the six days prior to his arrest. This was a distribution on an absolutely massive scale. For five months, Nick Webber probed Baldock's computer. He discovered evidence of an extensive and sophisticated club of paedophiles with its own committee, rules and vetting procedures. It was called Wonderland. The entry fee was 10,000 original images of child pornography. The club operated out of a secure chat room, a private area of the internet. To get in, the members, known only by screen nicknames, had to pass seven security checks. The main purpose of the club was the exchange of paedophile materials, pictures, movies, information, and most, most appallingly of all, sounds, terrible, terrible sounds. But while they were exchanging the pictures, they could sit inside this chat room and exchange information. Talking was great. You'd make friends and you'd say, oh, I found this new picture, this great new picture. And it, they would say, oh, what's it called? And you, you'd tell them. And if they had it, they'd say, oh, we've got that one. But if they didn't, then they'd say, oh, send it. We'll have a look. In April 1998, the National Crime Squad, experts in organised crime, took over the investigation. From their London headquarters, they set up an operation to track down the British members of Wonderland. The full horror of the images in Ian Baldock's computer cannot be shown publicly, 
but their disturbing content and quantity underline the urgency of the investigation. People don't realise that these images are not just children undressed, romping about on a beach. These images are absolutely hideous on some occasions. The abuse these children have suffered, the worst kind of possible abuse you could imagine. I have seen images that are the most horrible. Children in nappies being abused, people committing vaginal and anal rape on, on children as young as six and nine months. Uh, these people are serious sexual offenders. The internet allowed club members to build massive collections of child pornography. But it also enabled them to meet others who reinforced the perverse belief that sex with children is acceptable. People would message me who I didn't know, I'd never met before, and they would say, trade? And uh, that, was, that was it. If you wanted to trade, you would send them some pictures, they would send you some. Sexually explicit images of children? Yes. Illegal images? Yes. To most people, to all people indeed, morally wrong? Well, if that's how you choose to look at it, yes. Wonderland's electronic trail led north to a house in Stockport, Cheshire. Images of a nine-year-old girl being abused by a man who lived here were being traded in the Wonderland Club. That man was Gary Salt, a former RAF engineer and the father of one of the nine-year-old school friends. She went round for tea and stayed the night now and again. And that's how it started. And he was a real nice man. It, it was just the way he just made her his, his best friend type of thing. You know, she, she felt special uh, to him. But they just made up as games, and she liked playing games. The kind of games Gary Salt liked to play involved taking pornographic pictures of the girl and trading them on the internet. The abuse went on for months, until one day after school, her mother realised something was wrong. She fell me saying she's staying with him, and she's not coming home. She loves him. She loves him more than me, and... That's it. So I said, no, you've got to come home. You've got to come home. The mother threatened Salt she'd call the police if he didn't bring her child back. The next day, her daughter told her what had happened at Salt's house. She just said, it's touched me tuppy, Mum. I just asked her when, where. Um, it just, she just said it in his bedroom when he was taking pictures of me. When Manchester police arrested Gary Salt, they found over 20,000 pornographic images of children in his computer. It was a lucky break for the Wonderland investigation. Gary Salt turned out to be a key member of the club. He was very important because he wasn't just a member of Wonderland, he was an abuser in his own right, and he had images of himself abusing children, so he immediately assumed a very high notoriety within the group. I suppose he was considered a hero, somebody who was standing up for what the group believed in, who wasn't just mouthing it and saying it, and he was actually doing it. Gary Salt has already been sentenced to 12 years in prison for abusing three children. With Salt's computer, the police had more up-to-date intelligence on the club and a better chance of tracking them online. But they had to be careful. Salt's arrest had made other members even more security conscious. We'd worked out a technique where we could actually watch them live on the internet. So we were sitting very quietly and watching them coming and going into gang headquarters. As they were in effect coming past us, they couldn't see us, but we were able to backtrack and find out who they really were. To find out who they really were, the police now went to the companies through which people access the internet, the internet service providers. From the electronic data, they revealed names and addresses of customers holding those accounts. But the police needed to prove who was actually at the computer when the pornographic images of children were being downloaded from the internet through the phone line into the house. Detectives from the crime squad moved out across the country. For six weeks, they watched 13 addresses where Wonderland members were thought to live. It's not enough to know that there's somebody on the internet at a particular address. It's important that our suspects we were able to show through surveillance um, were at home when the internet was being used. 
The original Wonderland member from Hastings was tracked down to Charlbury, a village in Oxfordshire. Ian Baldock had been allowed out on bail with no conditions when his computer was seized. He was living opposite the local school. Ian Baldock would travel on his bicycle and get a train into his place of work. We were able to monitor his movements at that place of work and when he came out from work we would take him back home again um, and could ascertain that he was actually using a computer at work and at his home address. Baldock was now working the night shift for a computer company in Oxford. He'd gone right back online into Wonderland and spent hours on the internet. It was the only life he had. We never saw him associating with anybody else. He used to go to cafes on his own. He used to go to bars on his own. And when he went home, he never came out again in the evenings. For Ian Baldock and the others, Wonderland became an obsession, a virtual community that brought paedophiles together. Oh, it's great, the net. It's so fast. Everything's moving. I mean, there's always a software update you need for, for some of the programs on your computer or something. Um, there's always a new game that you've got from somewhere or new pictures to trade or... It's wonderful. It's, it's just, it draws you in, it sucks you in. It's a whole world in itself and it moves so fast. That's part of the attraction for it for me. As the crime squad began to build a picture of the members of Wonderland, the danger these men posed to children became very clear. The police had to balance the need for evidence against the risk to children. It was a constant risk assessment. We would do it often, where we would analyse whether that particular person at that particular time had access to children, whether the intelligence picture around them made us believe it was such that we couldn't actually let them stay at large any longer. Police traced one of the paedophiles to a terraced house in a back street in Dartford in Kent. In the club, he was known as Spank Daddy. In reality, he was Gavin Seegers, a 24-year-old computer technician. Seegers had long online conversations with other members. He was supported and encouraged in his paedophile activities by Ian Baldock. There was a, a recorded conversation between him and Seegers where Seegers is discussing going down to a local swimming pool um, and the, uh, in effect, the touching up of 11-year-old girls in swimsuits. And Bulldog is obviously very pleased about this from the conversation that they've been having. And he encourages Seegers to, uh, to continue and asks if he can get more information about this particular potential abuse. As they watched Seegers online, the police became more and more concerned. Gavin Seegers was fantasizing about the abduction, the rape, the torture, and the killing of children. Um, he was much easier to, to watch than, than some of the other members because his, his presence was, was almost constantly there on the internet. I could see him a lot of the time. Um, a very, very, very disturbing person to look at. In May 1998, the police tailed Gavin Seegers to a hut in Dartford. It turned out to be the local Sea Cadets headquarters. Seegers was a volunteer youth leader in contact with 25 boys and girls between 10 and 18. The police were in a dilemma. Should they arrest him and risk alerting all the other members? When we took him to the Sea Scout hut, the heckles on the back of our neck all stood up on end and we were all concerned as to what our next course of action should be. And we just ensured that whenever he was going to the Sea Scouts that we had the surveillance team with him to ensure that at no time when he departed did he take anybody with him. If at any stage it would have, he had had children with him um, on a one-to-one -one basis or a two-to-one basis, then uh, our instructions were that we were to arrest him. What Gary Salt had done to children in Stockport proved that some members of Wonderland would abuse children to enhance their status within the club. Three Wonderland members actually travelled to Stockport to meet children whom Salt had abused. One of them, Anthony Skinner, emailed snapshots round the world as a memento of his visit to Salt's house. 
some of them travelled to his home address and were pictured sitting on his bed with the children, not in indecent poses, but just so that they could get a buzz out of saying they've met the stars of the movie. That's the sort of mentality of the people we're dealing with. People were actively abusing children and producing pictures for others in the club, people like you. That's, that's not true. They weren't producing them for others. But children were being abused to provide images. There, there were some children... We, we, didn't see, we just didn't see it as abuse. We saw it as there were some children involved in relationships. But the idea that children could possibly want sex is totally abhorrent to everybody. Not to us. By June, eight months into the operation, the team working secretly out of Leatherhead Police Station had tracked down ten UK suspects. But their investigations had revealed up to 180 potential members of Wonderland in a dozen countries. We could have adopted the attitude we would just deal with the people in this country and we could have done it very quickly. It would have all been done and dusted a lot sooner than it was. But in truth, that would not have been uh, the way to go forward because obviously every one of these images represents a disaster to a family somewhere. And we decided that we would go forward by getting as many countries as we could on board with us so that we could maximise on our evidence. In July, the British police went to Virginia to the U.S. Customs Cyber Smuggling Center. Agents there were now briefed on 90 suspected American members of Wonderland. It was beyond the scope of any child pornography ring ever seen in the United States. It was now the turn of Customs computer expert Jim Fertrell to go through the mass of data. Folks from the U.K. produced lists of nicknames, uh, email addresses, and what country they were located in. Um, so basically, this is the information that we had to work with. And my responsibility was for all of the folks in the U.S. From this base bit of information, tracking down these email addresses to try to determine which ones were real, which ones were bogus. Um, just going through the list, there's about four pages, or about 90 different entries for people that, whose address were in the U.S. of A. Customs identified one of the key American members of the club, in St. Charles, Missouri, with the help of his internet service provider. He was living in a trailer park alongside several families and working in a nearby store. Online he traded child porn with other members, including his own father. His nickname was Bart, but his real name was Scott Allemeyer. He was a very popular, very well-respected guy. He was a producer. He was actually abusing kids, videotaping it, taking pictures, and sharing that pictures with everybody else in the channel. Um, that gave somebody great status. So he was definitely one of, the, one of the few people, the tier one, top shelf people. He was very much revered by everybody in the channel. And you can even see when he comes into the channel, people acknowledge him right away. Everybody is make sure to say hi to him. Hey, Bart, how's it going? What's new? Good to see you. And that's because Bart had something special to offer. He had something special to offer. Actionable, you know, actionable pictures, new producer, actionable material. He would basically produce stuff on demand. If you want a special request, you would talk to him about certain things that you wanted to see him do. The next time he's abusing a child, he would do it for you. We had the, the obvious stereotypical pedophiles, the people that were out scavenging the, the playgrounds and such. But we also had people that were marrying with families. We had an individual who was a professor in the University of Connecticut. We had law students. We had med students. We had people that you would never have been suspected of, of trading in this type of material. William Rosa seemed a respectable citizen, a 31-year-old medical student at Chapel Hill College in North Carolina. His training as a doctor included a stint in the children's unit at the hospital. But Rosa was also a member of Wonderland. He could be my general practitioner. He could be my family's GP. I could be sending my boys to him. Um, or uh, my neighbor could be sending their daughters to him. Um, that concerned me. He has access to the whole family as a, as a physician. From the student flat, which he shared with his girlfriend, William Rosa secretly spent hours at night downloading images. Online, he called himself Amy, knowing that other men in the club would trade more generously with someone they thought was a woman. Soon he had 70,000 images of children. I don't think William Rosa would have got involved in this 
had it not been for the internet. The anonymity that he used or thought he had allowed him to cross that line and enter into this world uh, hiding behind a fictitious name. By now eight European countries spanning the continent had been brought into the hunt for Wonderland. In Germany, the National Computer Crime Unit was looking for a dozen suspected members of the club. They examined the computer logs, emails and images passed to them by the British police. Sometimes it's unbelievable what you see. Sometimes it makes you furious. And especially when there are young children, very young children, who are abused. At a government guest house near Bonn, which had hosted international summits, the police found another key member of Wonderland. In private, his nickname was Ultima, and he was on the committee which ran the club. In public, he was a civil servant. Ultima was one German suspect who had very close contacts to the leading uh, characters worldwide, both to the UK and to the US. It was up to him to uh, decide whether a new member would be vetted or uh, would not be given access to the Wonderland ring. By the end of August, 13 countries were hunting for Wonderland members. Not all the suspects had been identified, but time was running out. Some in the club were becoming suspicious, secretly encoding their pictures to hide the evidence. Across the world, police forces decided they couldn't wait any longer. The club was about to be raided. The main concern was getting in, securing the evidence and preserving the evidence and preventing anyone from California uh, telling one in Italy that, hey, the police are just running my door and you should destroy everything you have because they may be coming to your house next. On September the 2nd, over a thousand police and child protection officers in 13 countries simultaneously raided 105 Wonderland members. In Britain it was 5 a.m. Eight suspects were arrested, their computers seized. We had their faces up on the wall. Suddenly now, these pictures on the wall were turning into real people. And a lot of the reports that were coming back from the arresting teams were very positive. They were getting the, the, the material, they were identifying the people successfully. So it was, it was a really good day. So what was your reaction? Oh, grief more than anything. It was, I was grieving for my friends, I didn't know what would happen. It, it's, I, I knew that some of them wouldn't be able to accept it, and I have found out since that six of them have committed suicide. In Germany, at dawn, the police closed in on a small village. Another club member, nicknamed Gronki, lived quietly here with his girlfriend. Like the others, he never suspected that the police knew about his activities. Es hat einen wirklich getroffen wie, wie ein Blitzschlag. It hit me like lightning. I was suddenly dragged back into the real world. Of course, I'd always been worried about it being illegal and completely immoral, but my obsession had got the better of me. The last thing on my mind was arrest. I never expected to find the police on my doorstep. In America, it was still the middle of the night when Scott Allemeyer's trailer home was raided. Weapons and explosives were found. Child protection officers discovered a homemade video of the abuse of an eight-year-old girl. Alamaya's trailer resembled a prison. He had an inner sanctum that he had built up uh, with plywood, and a lot of the doors were uh, maybe four inches thick. We found a uh, young girl's panties that he had put in plastic bags and it hid uh, down in the ductwork. Uh, he also had some, uh, some of these panties laying near the computer where he would sit at and work. Over a hundred computers were seized worldwide. Even for the British detectives who'd been involved in tracking down the Wonderland Club, the sheer scale of the child pornography was overwhelming. We couldn't believe the size. We took a seven and a half ton lorry to bring everything back to our base. We just didn't realize how big it was going to be. The photographs were unbelievable. They really did disgust a number of officers. 
and we are hardened detectives and seen a lot of this stuff before, but not some of this stuff. We had 750,000, that's three quarters of a million different images of paedophilia. Some of them were laughing, and yet you knew inside they were crying, and some of them were absolutely sobbing. Certainly one series that sticks in my mind is a series that was labelled Colby. Um, Colby would appear to be a child of, of no more than a year old, um, and the initial images are of a young toddler, a very blonde-haired uh, lad, walking uh, in a hallway in nappies. That image goes through some 20 or 30 slides and ends up with the most horrific abuse of, of the child. And, and, and certainly, like the rest of the team, I guess that one image probably stays with you, and that for me would be the most horrible that I, uh, I saw. Along with the pictures, there were terrible sounds stored on some of the computers. In Ian Bulldog's computer, there was a, a voice of a little girl. She sounds to me to be English, probably about eight or nine, being repeatedly beaten by her mother and saying, no more, no more. And the beating just continues again and again and again as she's crying and screaming. That, that hit really hard, really, really hard. It took a long time to get that out of my head. The police now began to examine the images for clues which would help them identify the victims. They were looking at the surroundings for any details which could indicate where and when pictures had been taken. Through each picture we looked for electrical sockets, we looked for magazines, anything in the wallpaper, anything that would give us a clue as to the nationality. And most majority of them are so professionally made um, that you can't tell. The National Crime Squad have now compiled a montage of 1,200 children's faces from the images. They're on an international database available only to police forces. If you like, we've done the easy bit. We've got the people that were trading this stuff, and, and they've now been dealt with. But I, I feel that only half the job's been done, because to finish it is to try and identify who these victims are. But only one child has so far been positively identified, an 11-year-old Portuguese boy. Rui Pedro Mendonca was abducted on his way to school three years ago and has never been found. Images of him were subsequently traded in Wonderland. Was the image of that Portuguese boy found on any of the computers seized here in Britain? Yes, it was. The image was found on uh, the computer of Gavin Seegers, uh, who was one of our suspects. It sounds uh, pretty chilling, doesn't it? A, a disappeared boy, paedophiles, computer images. The abuse of children is quite horrific. Um, we would know that the club, the Wonderland Club, um, consider themselves to be the cream of paedophiles. And we would know uh, that in their craving for new material, they would stop at nothing uh, to abuse children. The revelations about Wonderland are focusing everyone's concern on the growing problem of child pornography on the Internet. Some British Internet service providers, the companies which provide access to the Internet, carry such material on their networks. Indeed, paedophile content is openly advertised on some of the channels known as newsgroups. It is through these newsgroups that many of the members of Wonderland first found indecent images of children. This is a, an internet newsgroup browsing program. It allows you to access up to 46,000 different newsgroups. Here you can see in the newsgroups we've got a newsgroup called Alt Sex Paedophile, Alt Sex Paedophilia, Alt Sex Paedophilia Boys, Girls. So it's clearly marked pictures. Paedophilia? It's clearly marked paedophilia, and a simple click of the mouse will take you straight into it and the contents of that particular news group. And what's the likelihood of those contents being, in effect, illegal? Images of children being abused? A large proportion of it will be images that are illegal to be in possession of in this country. And that's openly available on the internet? Openly available and clearly marked as such. Why do some of your members carry news groups that are obviously to do with paedophilia, sex.babies, 
It's obvious what it contains. How can uh, no, you say you're serious about stopping child porn on the net when this kind of material exists openly by your I think, members? I think it's important to recognise that the actual names of news groups do not actually bear always a correspondence with what they actually contain. And if we took the action of uh, banning all different news groups because of a, a, a name, then we might not actually be banning information that, would, that was actually... But it would be a start, would it not, to stop news groups that are actually called sex.babies? Many of them are stopped. But many um, of them aren't. I mean, one of your members, for example, has a dozen of these sites specifically, sex.babies, sex.boys, sex.children, pictures.child erotica. What else are those news groups about if not illegal material? Well, as I said, the news groups themselves, the names, actually don't necessarily indicate what's in them. And, as but I some said, of the pedophiles that we've spoken to say that they got into this whole business and got into the net because they identified those news groups and went in that way because they found a news group called, for example, pictures.child. I'm not going to deny that these news groups do exist and, and some of them do contain illegal material. Tomorrow, a legal process that has dragged on for two years will come to an end when seven Wonderland members in England are sentenced. During that time, the men have been on bail at large in the community. The maximum prison term for their offences is being increased to ten years but too late for these men, who will only receive at most three years and are likely to serve even less. David Hines will be sentenced tomorrow. He thought he could rely on the anonymity of the Internet. He was wrong, but there are others who haven't been caught, men who are still active online. They'll hide up and then they'll start their own channel and then they'll go looking for each other and they'll regroup and the group will eventually be as big as it was with new members, with new pictures and with all of the old pictures which are still floating around out there. The policemen who patrol the internet still see the faces of hundreds of Wonderland children. They are out there forever. A lot of these kids are the, the equivalent of movie stars. They're famous. They're celebrities. Um, all their pictures are well known. What is the effect on the children of their notoriety? They are going to be, ab their abuse is going to continue for the rest of their life. That, that documentation of their abuse is going to be part of their life forever. The abuse of Cheryl's daughter in California four years ago started the hunt for Wonderland. Cheryl's child, like all the victims, will never escape the memory of her ordeal. It still is unfathomable to me that there are pictures of my child and videos of my child that were trafficked and are, you know, I mean, there's no stopping it once it's out there. They were given varying sentences for the participation in direction of that night when she was molested online. But her sentence is a life sentence. I mean, our, our, our child is going to deal with this as a part of her history uh, forever. You can comment on the issues raised in our program by visiting our website at bbc.co.uk slash panorama. Panorama returns in two weeks' time, investigating...